it is time for the 14th and final mock draft interview for this year's lottery. Welcome back into the GCM mock draft. Will Guillory joins us from New Orleans for the 20,000th time. Thank you for coming back yeah. on. Are you Save ready? the best for last. Save the best for last, of course. I did save the best for last. I saved my favorite for last. Don't tell um, the 12 before you. I'll make sure to text each of them individually. <laughs> once we All right, let's talk about the Pelicans. Um, the Pelicans this year, 42 and 40. You're building around some big names, albeit some rumors. We're not addressing anything. You got Zion, BI, CJ, JV, who Memphis fans obviously adore. Uh, when you look at how the Pelicans played last year, the record that they had, what they were good at, what they are bad at, is there something specific that a lottery pick player could address? Well, yeah, I think for one, the number one thing this team needs above all is shooting. Uh, you know, they were bottom five and uh, – three-pointers made and three-point percentage for a whole bunch of the season. Uh, for the Pels, obviously, the conversation is always going to be about injuries. Can guys stay on the court? Uh, can guys play for more than 30, 40 games in a row? Uh, when we have a conversation about a lottery pick, we're also talking about if those injuries pop up, a guy that may need to step in and play big minutes yeah. at some point. We saw that last year with Dyson Daniels, where the Pels took him very early in the lottery. And Did you take of, him on this mock draft? I think I did take him in this mock draft. So I, you know, I know a little something, <laughs> uh, but no, nah, I think the Pels kind of took him with the idea. We're going to let this guy develop. He was in the G league last year. He's still young, figuring himself out and due to injuries, he ended up playing a big role for this team last year. Uh, so I think that could be in their mindset too, having somebody that may potentially have to step in and play uh, big minutes next year. So, yeah, I think, you know, this is going to be a potentially an important pick for the Pels. All right. And I mean, if you're a Grizzlies fan and you're watching this right now, like, you know, the importance of not overlooking picks, no matter where they are. We were just talking about this well before I pressed record, like the Grizzlies have done so good in their picks, whether that goes all the way to like the 40th pick, you can find a gem. So this is the last lottery pick. Let's just get to it. This is the last one we're doing. I just, let's fill the board. Will, you are on the clock drafting for the New Orleans Pelicans. Who are you taking? Yes, yeah, so we were talking about this. You sent me the big board, mm -hmm. and I saw that Kobe Bufkin went one pick before the Pels, That's which killed guy. me because Kobe Bufkin was going to be my guy at 14. I think he would have been a great fit as like a bucket getter off the bench for the Pels. So scratch that off of my list. So now at number 14, I have the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Jordan Hawkins out of wow. the University of Connecticut. Wow. Some people may look at that as a reach. I see some boards having him like in the 20 range, mm -hmm. uh, which is understandable because he's a little skinny. I don't know how great of a defender he's going to be in the league, but I think that dude just got some, some dog in him. Uh, he's played two years in college, so he's a 21-year-old. Uh, mm -hmm. The Pels have had success drafting older players like Herb Jones, Trey Murphy. Everybody uh, wants Herb Jones. Yeah, everybody wants their Herb Jones. They they signed uh, Jose Alvarado out of college, a guy who played four years. Mm -hmm. and I said uh, out of Colorado, out of Georgia Tech. He played four years in college. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they like the older players, guys who have an understanding of what their role is coming out of college. And I think Jordan Hawkins kind of exemplifies that uh, maybe more than anybody in that first, you know, 14 pick range. Uh, you know, a guy who moves really well off the ball, made over 100 three-pointers as a sophomore, won a national championship at UConn. So I think he's a guy who can step in and just immediately know what his role is going to be in New Orleans. He's going to get wide open threes playing next to B.I. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Zion Williamson. And also he's a guy who can add an element to your offense, you know, running off of screens, running some baseline screens, some pin downs, uh, just kind of taking some attention away from your big stars. And if you don't, pay attention to him he can make you pay uh hitting some shots from the outside so yeah I think he's got maybe some other teams are rather more upside there but I think the Pels that they, they might be looking for somebody who can come in play a defined role and help their stars out this was an interesting pick so names that I thought could work especially if you're talking about shooting uh Nick Smith Jr was mm -hmm. one of them who you know has a pretty good jump shot from the mid-range the three uh Leonard Miller Jeff Howard is a pretty good shooter. There's so many guys 
uh, Bilal Koulibaly. There were so many guys left on the board this lottery. Although everyone's like, oh, it's top heavy. It's top heavy. Cause like, you know, who the top three is going to be. I really felt like there was a ton of guys or is a ton of guys this year uh, that will be able to come in and, and help teams right away. So does Jordan assist in like, does he fit exactly what you think the Pelicans need? Like, is he going to be a good shooter off the bat? Yeah, you know, I wrote this before in one of my mock drafts on the, the athletic. I don't remember which one, but I said the philosophy for the Pels going into the draft is a uh, BSA, best shooter available. And I think uh, Jordan Hawkins is that guy. I mean, watching this team last year, I thought the spacing was an issue so often, especially uh, when Zion wasn't out there, you know, demanding all that attention. I think having a guy who can just knock down some shots, who can step in and just have that confidence immediately. I think Jordan Hawkins is going to walk. You see him, some of the clips, he's a guy who just walks around with a ton of confidence, believes in himself. And and some of that goes into, like I said, him having a little bit of experience Mm -hmm. under his belt, playing on the big stage. He knows exactly who he is. And I think it's it's very rare to find those movement shooters, those guys who can, you can run off of screens, full speed, set their feet and, and knock down shots. I think that's a real asset in today's NBA. You saw that a little bit with Luke Kennard last year, right? When he steps in and adds an element to your offense where he doesn't exactly, he's not going to break anybody down off the dribble. He's not going to post up a mismatch, but having him moving off the screens can bring attention over here. And that allows your guy to to get some free space over here. Uh, So I think that's really important. And like I said, I think the big knock on Jordan Hawkins is just his, he's a little slight. Uh, I think he might be a little bit of a target for teams defensively. We we saw, you know, during the playoffs uh, that certain guys, teams just say, okay, I'm attacking you every single time. Uh, I think Jordan's going to have to improve with that. But I think also, like I said, he's just got a little bit of dog in him. I like that he's got some fight. He's not going to allow guys to pick on him. You can see him getting in the mix, grabbing some boards. Uh, getting into the paint, doing some stuff. So I think he's a little tougher that people give him credit for. Uh, and, and, you know, just his shooting, I think is something that's extremely valuable uh, for a team like the Pell. So might be a little bit of a reach, but I think he would be a really good fit here in New Orleans. Well, you've seen um, some of my highlights. If I was eligible for the draft, would you take me as a shooter? Oh, number one overall. Like who, who, who needs Wimby? Come on now. <laughs> Just get him out of here. Move KJ in there. I, I know you're about throwing some bows. I know you, you you'll you'll put a shot up. You don't care. You're like, hey, mismatch. <laughs> give it to me on the block. It's understood. I've seen the clips. If y'all haven't, look them up, and you'll know. Like you'll be like, who who needs a seven five dude? He's got some dog in her. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope this one's right again. I want you to go. I think this might be the third draft that you've been a part of, and. I need to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure you nailed both of them. I'd have to go back and look at the first year. I have. I think we did the the Kyra Lewis draft. And I don't know. I might have taken Kyra Lewis. I'll just say I did. So I can yeah. act like let's, I'm a genius here. Let's go everything. three out of three. I agree. Listen, you. if you want to do next year's draft, I'll, I'll get next year's draft right too as well. We can just knock that out next. Oh, my. <clears throat> the confidence. <laughs> Thank you, Will. I appreciate you writing up the mock draft. Always.